It is just before I'm about to go on another shopping trip for food, so I'm getting low on groceries, so I'm making clean out my fridge pasta. So backtracking a little bit, a couple videos ago I detailed how I plan for like grocery trip for a week or for two weeks and how I plan the meals. And right now it is Wednesday, exactly two weeks after my last grocery shopping trip. So I want to show you what my fridge looks like right now. Like if you didn't check out that video, you'd see that like at the beginning of the video before the shopping trip, the fridge was a little more empty than this. And uh, now it's getting back down to that empty state. Um, and pretty much as I outlined before, what will usually prompt a shopping trip is running out of milk and or cream and soda because of my husband's Coke habit, but also like running out of vegetables. As you can see, uh, I still have a lot of carrots, a potato and some onions, and those are vegetables that I just always have on hand. I also still have a little bit of poor old tired celery in here. Still can use it. Uh, it's not very good eaten raw at this point. It's good cooked in things though. But among my um, unused ingredients are some of these sweet peppers that I got for other dishes. I got a huge bag and that was way more than I needed for my recipes and I knew that I'd have extra. So I have some of this and then Napa cabbage. Whenever I buy cabbage, I always get like way more cabbage than I actually need for whatever recipe or recipes I'm cooking. So yeah, inevitably there's leftover cabbage. So what I like to do when I have leftover vegetables that I want to get rid of is I either make um, a stir fried veggie with oyster sauce and rice, or I'll do like a pasta and that's what I'm doing right now. And all you really need to make it taste good is like one or two vegetables. Um, <laughs> The only thing to remember is that if you're using two different vegetables, in this case cabbage and sweet peppers, uh, just add the vegetable first that takes longer to cook, which in this case is the cabbage. And then for seasoning, all I'm using is a little garlic and a little red pepper flake. If you have like fresh basil, fresh parsley, any of those other herbs, like totally use those. If you want to put cheese in, totally put cheese in. I don't know, I'm keeping it very basic. Uh, salt. And then this pasta, when I bought this pasta, you may recall, I said I didn't have any like specific plans for it, but I was restocking. I always like to keep pasta in my pantry. And this is one of the reasons why I always like to keep pasta in my pantry so that I can improvise something like this. So just in a large nonstick skillet, I have about a tablespoon of olive oil warming up. You can use any kind of fat you want. And then I got a big pot of salted water coming up to the boil. And I'm just going to prep these veggies and the garlic. I've just rough chopped the garlic and I've diced my peppers and I've just sliced my cabbage and I've already put it in the pan with some salt to start cooking. As I mentioned earlier, it takes a lot longer to cook and this might look like a lot, but it's going to wilt down to almost nothing. <laughs> so that's why there's so much cabbage in here. Plus I just have so much cabbage to get rid of and it's good for you. So might as well. And meanwhile, my water is starting to almost boil. So I'm going to measure out my pasta. And this may seem psychopathic, but I actually measure my pasta. Uh, I am on a diet, so I'm counting my calories. And one thing I really like about short pasta is that it's really easy. It's just, you know, a serving is three quarters of a cup and it's 200 calories per three quarters of a cup. So if I want 400 calories, which I do, I need one and a half cups of dry pasta. So it's really easy to measure out. I know exactly how many calories I'm getting out of it. And like, there's no guesswork. Like with spaghetti, I have to guess. <laughs> I have to like eyeball how much of the container I'm using and it's really annoying. So short pasta. So while this all is cooking, I might as well talk a little bit about this dish in general. Um, as I said, I'm improvising this. This isn't like a recipe. Uh, I mean, I probably have made this exact combination before, but who knows? Uh, I really just take any vegetable or vegetables that I need to get rid of that are like they're going to go bad in a few days if I don't eat them and I saute them in olive oil and then usually I'll add garlic because that makes it taste better and usually I'll add pepper flakes and you know that's basically the dish. It doesn't have to be cabbage, it doesn't have to be red peppers. I've done this with, oh my goodness, okay I've done this with any combination of, uh, oftentimes I'll just do one vegetable, but any combination of mushrooms, uh, red peppers, cabbage, broccoli, bok choy even, I've done it with bok choy. You may think it's just an Asian vegetable and you can only cook Asian dishes with it, but no, you can use it in like Italian cuisine. It's pretty much like cabbage. I've used, ooh, water's boiling, and an additional half. I've used Brussels sprouts, that's one of my favorites. Uh, if it's in the summertime, I like to use zucchini or yellow squash. That's really tasty. Uh, you can do this with like cherry tomatoes. Uh, and then you can add other things like uh, pine nuts. I thought about adding that, but like I said, I'm on a diet and pine nuts are very, very caloric and I'm gonna have stuffed crust pizza later today. So I wanted to keep this really light. Uh, but yeah, you can add nuts 
to this. Like if you want to make it a little more substantial, like pine nuts or almonds or walnuts or whatever uh, nut that you have or seeds, you could add pumpkin seeds, you could use pumpkin, <laughs> I mean, you could use pretty much any vegetable you want to use. Uh, and then you can also use any fat that you want to use, you don't have to use olive oil, you can use butter, you can use coconut oil, you could use like rendered animal fat, I've done it with all of those things. So yeah, this is a very versatile, forgiving, uh, improvised sort of dish. Oh, and I'm going to fish the pasta, when the pasta is done, I'm going to fish it out with a slotted spoon instead of drain it because I want to save this pasta water. That's very important. Okay, the cabbage has wilted quite a bit and gotten a little translucent. I kind of like that some of these pieces are bigger and they're gonna be a little crunchy and some of the pieces have really disintegrated. I kind of like that. A lot of professional chefs are like, you must cut everything uniformly. Like, eh, depends on what you want. Anyway, I'm gonna add the peppers. Oh yeah, other variations of this dish that I have done. Uh, you can, when you add the pasta at the end, you can, in addition to pasta water, add white wine, you can add cream, um, and like I said earlier, you can add cheese if you want. But again, I'm keeping it really light and simple today. And a little more salt. And at this point, we're in no danger of burning anything, so I'm going to add some pepper flakes. I like a lot of pepper flakes. <laughs> and garlic. Well, you know how I said I was going to scoop out the pasta instead of straining it? I lied. My veggies are not done yet, but my pasta is, so <laughs> I am just retrieving a cup of pasta water and a bow tie escaped in there, and I'm going to drain this. And now that this pasta water burner is liberated, I can put the vegetables on it. This is the problem with living in a cheap apartment and having a stove where three of your four burners are small. It's really annoying when you're trying to cook a dish like this. Anyway, I covered this so that the vegetables could steam and release a little more of their moisture easier, but the peppers are still not quite soft enough at this point to add the pasta, which is why I drain the pasta instead of spooning it directly into the vegetables like my original plan. That's okay. Roll with the punches. I'm just going to give this another couple minutes and then it'll probably be ready. Okay, now that we have a properly sized burner, this is cooking nicely and it is ready for the pasta. So I'd say one of the biggest mistakes beginners make with pasta is, uh, unless there's like an actual sauce involved, if it's just something like this, like sauteed veggies with pasta, uh, is it tends to be very, very dry. And you can remedy that by either adding a bunch of fat, which tastes delicious, <laughs> isn't the healthiest thing, uh, or the correct thing is to add a little hot pasta water. And as I mentioned earlier, I've made this with white wine or with cream, so those also work pretty well to prevent this from being, you know, dry. But yeah, a little pasta water really helps bring everything together and make it not so dry. And it also helps to finish cooking the pasta all the way. That's another point. Uh, people always wonder how long to cook the pasta. Basically just look on the box and then cook it one or two minutes less than what the box says. <laughs> and that's about how much you should cook your pasta if you want to finish it in a pan like this in the sauce for a minute or so. And you know, there's still a little loose water at this point, so just keep stirring it until there's no more like loose water. It'll be a little thicker and glossier looking. And once it's almost there, turn it off. And I don't have a lot of herbs, but I am growing some outdoors, and I didn't want to harvest them yet because they're still babies, but I just picked a leaf of parsley off just to make it look pretty for the thumbnail. And behold, it's pasta -y vegetable -y goodness. All right, like I said, this isn't exactly a recipe recipe. I do have a write-up in the video description below if you're interested. But yeah, this is just showing you how you can make something out of what you think is nothing in your fridge.